Now, the fallout from Tom Price's resignation over his use of official taxpayer-funded travel for unofficial business continues to spread over the Trump cabinet. Now, uh, it turns out some other members of Trump's inner circle have been also found using taxpayer-funded trips to go to things like campaign events. Now, one of them is Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke. Now, uh, political reports that in one instance, uh, Zinke had taken a trip to the Virgin Islands. When he was there, Republican donors reportedly paid up to $5,000 per couple for a photo with Zinke at a fundraiser. Now, this was a taxpayer-funded trip to the Virgin Islands. Now, this is according to documents reviewed by Politico. So this is all official documents. This is not fake news, right? Now, this example, they say, is raising questions about Zinke's habit of mixing official government business with his own political activism, which would be a violation of the Hatch, uh, Hatch Act, depending on how it's done. I'll get into those details uh, in a bit. Now, first, the new details about Zinke's March trip to the Caribbean emerged after weeks of scrutiny of the former Montana GOP congressman's travels. Now, the nearly two-hour event that happened in the Virgin Islands was one of more than a half a dozen times Zinke has met with big donors or political groups while on department-paid trips. This is according to the interior travel records and other documents. Now, again, this is illegal. It kind of depends on how you do it. Um, you've got to be very careful not to violate what is the Hatch Act, right? Now, even if you're not violating the Hatch Act, it still looks pretty bad. I mean, it kind of looks like the swamp, really. Now, Craig Holman, government affairs specialist for the government watchdog Public Citizen, says that, look, it does happen on occasion with other cabinet secretaries doing this, uh, you know, official, these official taxpayer-funded business trips and then going to campaign stops while you're also there. It does happen. Um, now, he says it happens perhaps even a little more often as you get nearer to the election, which would make more sense as you're having more campaign events and fundraisers. However, he says it's not a very common practice for cabinet members to be hopping around from campaign event to campaign event like we're seeing with Zinke. Now, Politico notes that the secretary is already investigation by his own department's inspector general over his use of taxpayer-funded private planes for some of the trips. And the Justice Department's official, of, or I'm sorry, Office of Special Counsel is now also looking into an activist group's allegations that he had violated the Hatch Act. Now, again, that law limits political activism by federal employees. And again, the lines are, are very, very blurry on what is a violation of the Hatch Act. You kind of have to really try to violate it. Uh, now, and trust me, uh, he's actually trying very, very hard. So let me give you details of some of the Virgin Islands trip. Now, Zinke had visited the Virgin Islands from March 30th to April 1st on an official trip related to the Interior Department's role overseeing the U.S. territory. Um... We're not having a very good track record with overseeing U.S. territories. I mean, look at Puerto Rico. Uh, but anyway, um, <laughs> now in his first day, following a veterans meet and greet in a reception with uh, Governor Kenneth Mapp, he appeared in his personal capacity at a March fundraiser for the local Republican Party at the patio bar of the Club Comanche Hotel St. Croix, That's according to department records. Now, the fact that he appeared in his personal capacity is actually very important if you do that and not as an official capacity like for example throwing around your title well then you're not violating the hatch act again that's like a super lax law and you really have to try you have to try hard to violate the hatch act now tickets for the fundraiser range from 75 dollars per person to as much as five thousand dollars per couple to be an event patron this is according to Zinke's official calendar and copy of the invitation. Patrons and members of the host committee who paid $1,500 per couple could get a photo with Zinke at the start of the event, which was attended by local party members and elected officials. The following day, Zinke took a $3,150 flight on a private plane paid for by the department from St. Croix to official functions on St. Thomas and returned later that evening. Interior department officials said there was no other way to accommodate his schedule, so, oh man, look, yeah, I couldn't take a, I couldn't take a commercial flight. 
because, uh, you know, I just didn't fit around my schedule. I would have actually had to have wait and maybe been slightly inconvenienced. Nope, couldn't do that. I've got to use department money, taxpayer money, to fly to St. Thomas and back that same night. Lovely. Uh, now, his, uh, interestingly enough, his schedule, right? The very reason that he had to take those private flights in the first place uh, was full of, again, official events and non-official events. Now, one official event uh, it commemorates the 100th anniversary of the Dutch government transferring control of the islands to the United States. Okay, that's perfectly legitimate. Go and do that. But again, there are other events that were not official that he had turned up in. Now, the invitation to the GOP fundraiser did not identify Zinke by his official title and included a disclaimer that the money is being solicited by the local party and not by the federal official. That does not violate the Hatch Act. Again, the Hatch Act allows cabinet members to engage in partisan political activity in a purely personal, not official capacity as long as they do not use government resources. So no government planes, no government flights to uh, fundraisers where they uh, are engaging in any official capacity. Again, super weak law, right? Of course, it has to be weak in order to get through a Congress. Because of course they want to do this. They all want to do this. Um, now, and I didn't mean Congress, I actually meant a presidential cabinet. Now, again, doesn't seem illegal, but the lines are pretty blurry. But despite this, it seems pretty bad. Now, what's sad about this is that we have legalized this kind of corruption in America. That's the fact that it is legal. So I want to show you how much taxpayer money he had actually spent on jet setting for uh, his donors. Old told Zinke has spent about $20,000 for three charter flights as secretary. Now, um, here's the thing. Tom Price got in trouble for racking up a million dollars on non-commercial flights. So compared to Tom Price, Ryan Zinke didn't really spend all that much. But at the same time, that's $20,000 of taxpayer money that went to sometimes him just going to fundraisers in a non-official capacity. Now, Politico also notes that he has on numerous occasions attended political receptions, spoken to influential conservative groups, and appeared alongside past campaign donors during trips he has taken outside of Washington, D.C. for official department business. In one instance, Zinke gave a motivational speech for a professional hockey team owned by a major campaign contributor that said he was official business. He said that was official business. I'm just going to speak to this hockey team owned by my biggest donor. What? Official business. I'm pretty sure that has nothing to do with the Interior Secretary's office. Just saying. Now, here's the thing about that one. I said he spent $20,000 total on these commercial flights, right? That flight alone cost him $12,000. Oh, I'm sorry. Not the flight to uh, a professional hockey team. Actually, um... He also had to go to uh, an appearance at the Western Governors Association the next day. So actually, yes, uh, he did use that and then had another flight to Montana. So that was the official business, the Western Governors Association. The unofficial business was a motivational speak for a hockey team. Like I said, $12,000 on that. Again, how is that official business? That's crazy. Now, in another case... During a speech to the Western Conservative Summit in Denver, he was introduced by a recorded voice as the Interior Secretary, and Zinke proceeded to talk about the agency's priorities. The summit was organized by the Centennial Institute, which bills itself as Colorado Christian University's think tank and is a part of the state policy network of organizations that collectively push for conservative state-level le legislation. That seems like it's a campaign outside group and not official business. That looks like he violated the Hatch Act there. But of course, um, some people agree, some people disagree. Now, um, one of the people who says that, yes, it seems like he did, uh, is Daniel Stevens. Now, Stevens, uh, who's the executive director of the Campaign for, of Accountability, said, quote, some of this travel is clearly political, and that part of the travel should have been paid for by the RNC, the NRCC, state political parties, or even a campaign committee, or Zinke personally. But instead, he had the government pay for it. 
which was us. Now, no payments to the department are listed in the Virgin Islands Republican Party FEC records. Now, again, I'm going to note that this is not the only time a cabinet secretary has been found possibly violating the Hatch Act, doing the same thing that Zinke is doing. And I would be remiss in pointing this out. And this was uh, Obama's cabinet secretary, um, Ken Salazar. Now, there is a question of whether he violated the Hatch Act. Um, however, there is no question on whether former HHS Secretary Catherine Sebelius violated the Hatch Act. She actually did. And you can look that up. She was definitely caught doing the same thing, giving speeches. Now, look, the reason that I bring those up is I'm trying to tell you that I don't care what team you're on. Okay, whether you're team Republican or team Democrat, I don't really give a shit. If you are using taxpayer money to go to donors and fundraisers, that is unacceptable to me. This should not be a partisan issue. The American people, whether you're Democrat or Republican or independent, we're all against corruption. We're against government corruption. Now, if you're only pointing out one and not the other, then you're not just pointing out corruption. You're, you're playing politics. To your advantage now all that said there is a solution to all of this and it doesn't mean like oh strengthening the hatch act no we could actually not need the hatch act if we were to remove the money from politics now think about that if you if you remove money from politics then you've got no more taxpayer funded trips to meet donors and do fundraising and, and campaign events while you're also doing official business there, there wouldn't be any campaign fundraisers or events because you wouldn't need to raise money and as you can see both sides do engage in this so again it's not a partisan issue it's something that we the people need to actually put a stop to if we're going to have a government that actually serves us and not the donors and it turns out if you end the corrupting influence of money then you end the corruption that is not a that, that is not a difficult concept and if we could all rally around that whether you know you're conservative or libertarian or liberal whatever if we all rally around the idea that hey we want a government that actually works for us and not to giant donors then we should all work together to try to end the corrupting influence of money in politics because that's what creates these situations and nothing else hey everybody thanks for watching this video if you want to see more like this please hit the subscribe button below and if you want to support truly independent progressive media please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.